Round one of the 2017 GRC season began the way last year ended. Scott Speed put the field on notice with a record-setting win in Memphis to start his title defence the best way. The Volkswagen seemed to be the cars to beat, and Speed's teammate and two-time champion Tanner Faust has this title in his sights after a close battle in the home of the Blues. But the rest of the field let the VWs know that they're not going anywhere. Steve Arpin finished on the podium, and 2014 Lights champion Mitchell De Jong and the Hondas proved they're here to race for real. Today, we're in Louisville, Kentucky, home to horse racing, sluggers, and Muhammad Ali. Will Scott Speed be able to punch his title hopes further, or will someone else leave Louisville in the lead? Round two of Red Bull Global Rallycross starts now. NBC Sports welcomes you to round two of the 12 round 2017 Red Bull GRC Championship where the series visits Kentucky for the very first time and this seven tenths of a mile track will test the best of these pilots steering these dynamic supercars. Hi folks, Lee Diffie with you here in Louisville where just two weeks ago, Always Dreaming won the Kentucky Derby just down the road at Churchill Downs. But here on the grounds of the Kentucky Exposition Center, horsepower of a very different kind. In fact, 600 horsepower in each of these supercars that you will see slip, slide and fly around this track today. What we're going to see, here's what's on the menu. Heats have an increased purpose and meaning this year. The reason why is they'll not only determine, of course, as always, where you'll start in the semi-final, but there are points on offer for each and every heat and points on offer as well for the two semi-finals. Why is that important? Because they go to your season end points tally as well, because it's all about the race for this GRC championship. The action will end today in a climax with a 10-lap final where there is a whopping 50 points on offer. And yes, reigning champion Scott Speed grabbed all 50 of those points at the opening round in Memphis, Tennessee. Who will get the big points today? We'll find out. Townsend Bell joins me here in the Bluegrass State to call the opening heat of supercars where we see Cabot Bigham, Steve Arp and Patrick Sandell, Oliver Erickson and Austin Dine. T-Bell ready to go and this track looks challenging. It is challenging. Nice to see Austin Dine back out there after failing to score any points with the mechanical issue at the last round. But this should be great. Five wide across the board for the start as we see Austin Dine there. I think he's smiling just knowing that he's got a shot. There we are on board with Oliver Erickson. I think, Focus. I, I think for Austin, you, you hit the nail on the head there. He's just happy to be racing after he had that troublesome time in Memphis at the season opener. And the bright yellow car, second from the left, the JCB machine of Steve Arpin. He is pumped after a top three result at the season opener. Let's go. He won here in Kentucky. A lot of tire smoke there. Look at Kevin Bingham up the inside. He's forcing his way through, but it's a Honda. Oliver Erickson up front. Sandell was forceful also in the Valvoline Subaru, but it's Erickson who leads in the Red Bull Honda. Whoa, Austin Dine, there's contact early. Big contact as they come to the dirt, and that looks like fresh groom. Really tough to find traction. There's Kevin Bingham into the back of Sandell. They all go for the jump here. They're gonna be side by side. No, single file as they come over. Hard breaking here for the right-hander that leads back onto the front straight away. Erickson Sandell. Then Steve Arpin, top three, Cabot Bingham. I was worried uh, about Dine's car. He really slowed after that contact, but he seems to have picked up pace again. Yeah, he's kind of regrouping here, trying to get back into the groove. Really demanding set of right-handers here. They're already back in the dirt, and that Honda barrier goes straight down. Let's see if anybody opts for the Joker this time through. Jesse B Machine was up into second. Now two take the Joker, Erickson and Sandell. Erickson and Sandell. Sandell will come out just in front of Steve Arpin. And look at Arpin has a chance to go up the inside, and he has the position now. Nice move from uh, Steve Arpin. Beautifully executed. 
So it's a Swede, a Canadian, and another Swede in the top three positions. Oliver Erickson with the perfect start in this season, in this opener of the weekend, I should say. And that Red Bull Honda Civic is looking great. Now Steve Arpin's going to do his best here to try to close Arn Erickson. He doesn't want to get bumper to bumper. He wants to get about a car width back before he elects to take that joker. Subaru boys, both Patrick Sandell and Chris Atkinson, really want to make an improvement on what went down in Memphis, and they feel they can. They feel the team is buttoned up. They're ready to go. They're really motivated. And when you look at Sandell's season opener, it wasn't the best, so he's got a lot of catching up to do as well. Yeah, speaking of catching up, Steve Arpin is right there. I think we might see a joker run here. No, he elects to stay behind Erickson. Look at him grab a little bit of that tarmac driver's right and get a better launch over the jump, and it really made a difference. He closed about a full car width. Now Arpin's going to swing wide and look for the over-under like he did earlier on Sandell. Is that a little cheeky Townsend doing that, or that's fair play? I think it's, it's a guy with a lot of experience, Steve Arpin. Third or fourth season here in GRC. He knows what it takes to get by. He understands how to do that cleanly. He comes from a very broad background of late models, stock cars, NASCAR, Xfinity series. So he knows how to get it done. But this is where, look at the dirt goes onto the windshield as Arpin takes the joker. This should be an easy pass for Steve Arpin. And he was all over Oliver Erickson and Arpin for the lead. He gets it, it works. Perfect timing there on the joker lap for Steve Arpin. And there you see the experience of Steve Arpin in hugging the inside of both apexes as they come to the checkered flag. He defended the crossover move from Erickson. Look at the windshield, beautifully done. Steve Arpin takes the win. And he does what he did in Memphis, and that is winning the first heat of the weekend. What a start and what a beginning to this 2017 Red Bull Global Rallycross season for Canadian Steve Arpin in the JCP, JCB Ford Fiesta. Fabulous start. Played the joker lap just to perfection. Saved the best to last. When Oliver Erickson looked the strongest. Let's have a look at how they finished. So it was Arpit, Erickson, and Bigham, Patrick Sandell, and then Austin Dine finishing out the results there from Heat 1A. And remember, new for 2017, points on offer as we enjoy a replay on board the Red Bull Honda Civic. Oliver Erickson, and boy, what a launch he got. Looked like Sandell had to jump off the line, but the power of that Honda just dominated as they came to the first corner. And then this was the contact with Cabot Bigham. Steve Arpin trying to turn in, but there's nowhere to go. Bigham has the nose there on Arpin. And then this was Arpin taking the joker. Look at that. Nice slide to the outside. Passes Erickson and has the point as they come to the right-hander. As we said, saving the best to last was Steve Arpin going through to get the win. And the race winner is with Will Christian. Thanks, guys. Steve, a beautifully driven race from you there. Talk to me about the Joker and leaving that to the very last lap. It obviously paid off well for you. It paid off well, but uh, this first off, this JCB car was amazing today. This uh, first time in the sport for JCB, we welcome them. It's going to be an awesome relationship. The best construction equipment in the world, so check it out. But this car was amazing. We struggled through practice, got it working good, and uh, I, I think I waited a little bit too long on the Joker because I got held up going into it, and he just face planted me with dirt. It was, it was actually kind of cool, but... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm really excited to see what we got going forward to this thing. We, I think we got it close. Our guys are working their tails off. We're going to be, uh, I think we're going to be in good shape. Well, you secured that heat win. Thanks so much, Steve. Right, guys, back to you for Heat 1B action. And Will, that enthusiasm from Steve Arpin and his team is infectious. It's the theme of season 2017 as we transition to Heat 1B. Tanner Faust, Scott Speed, the Andretti Rallycross Volkswagen boys, along with Chris Atkinson in his first full season of Red Bull GRC, Sebastian Eriksson and Mitchell de Young. There we see Mitchell de Young. He's actually top of the points of the three Honda drivers, currently sits in fourth as the young American gets ready. The radio transmission there. Chris Atkinson, what a celebrated career in off-road racing he has had. Former World Rally Championship pilot and now full-time GRC competitor. Tanner Faust, big sigh, one last breath, ready to go. He showed us that he hasn't lost any of his form from 2016 in the season opener in Memphis, but 
Look how tight he is with his teammates. Scott Speed and championship leader, second from the left. Tanner Faust quickest to qualify, but he has to get ahead of Speed if he has a chance here. Great start from Tanner Faust. Big oh. contact, Atkinson on Speed, but Speed has the position. Scott Speed takes the lead. We're on board with Chris Atkinson in the Subaru. Look how fierce it is through the opening turn. And Tanner Faust is caught in traffic. Not what Tanner Faust wants. A little bit of a bump and run there from Tanner Faust. Gets into the back of Aronson. Faust takes second place, but that was a pretty aggressive move. And we've just seen Heat 1A with Oliver Erickson. No relation whatsoever, other than being a Red Bull Honda teammate. And Mitchell DeYoung brings up the rear in fifth position in Heat 1B. The Volkswagens are off. Can anyone catch them? Oh, and that's what Atkinson and those two Honda drivers, DeYoung and Erickson, are thinking. We cannot let the Volkswagens get away. Volkswagen's been so dominant in GRC over the course of the last year. The teams are working overtime to try to make up the gap as Atkinson works it through the dirt section, grabs some of that tarmac. Speed takes the joker and opens up a beautiful gap. How many times have we seen Scott Speed finish a GRC heat or a main with a perfectly clean front end? Absolutely no pressure for Scott Speed. Great ride on board. I'll be briefly there with Tanner Faust. You know, this weekend, uh, Townsend, there's been a change in the sporting and technical regulations for Red Bull GRC as far as launch control. And we're so used to seeing those Andretti Volkswagens really leap off the line. Well, as far as the launch control activation, you're allowed to do that. That's only allowed to be activated for a lot shorter time. But it hasn't had an impact on the Andretti Volkswagens. No, and we almost had an impact there with Atkinson and Faust. That is very close. Faust taking... Sorry, Atkinson taking the joker, and they almost ended up door to door. Atkinson doing a brilliant job to keep it clean. I thought he was going to have a chance, but certainly now Faust is going to be thinking, this is my chance for the joker. Let's see if he goes here. No, he's going to rotate it, and that's how much it can slow down the trailing car, the amount of slip angle that's required as they come up over the jump. So Faust still has the joker in his bag with two to go. He'll have one to go at the line. Look at Scott Speed. He is gone. It's not daylight, there's like half a suburb in between himself and his and Freddy Volkswagen teammate. I'll tell you what, it's a big deal for the Subaru team and Chris Atkinson that they are this close to Tanner Faust. Yeah, if you look at qualifying, Lee Atkinson qualified third at uh, just about three tenths of a second off Scott's speed, but ahead of the rest of the field. So the Subaru is capable of the pace, but it just seems like on that long straightaway, the power of the Volkswagens is, is really superior right now. Checkered flag is out. Scott Speed starts exactly the way he did in Memphis with a victory. Nice way to begin, and in the end, Sebastian Eriksson slid by Chris Atkinson there as well. So, Andretti Rallycross, 1-2, as we left Memphis in the final. That's how they came home. So, Scott Speed, victorious. Replay of the start. Watch this. Watching Faust, and it looks like there he's making an adjustment. It looks like he just bogged, maybe not quite enough revs, maybe too aggressive on the clutch drop. He actually left the line first, but as soon as the clutch was released, the motor fell down into a little bit of a bog period there, and now he's fighting to try to catch Scott Speed, and there's the bump. Big impact to push Ericsson out of the way in the Honda and try to hang on to Scott Speed. So Speed and Faust ahead of the first of the Hondas in Sebastian Ericsson. Chris Atkinson might be a little frustrated with that, just getting pipped right at the end of Heat 1B. And look at this deep, loamy soil that the Volkswagens are just plowing through. And Scott Speed, the master at minimizing slip angle. He's just got a raw ability to know what the car needs. Red Bull GRC is up and running for the first time ever in the Bluegrass State. Well, Volkswagen Andretti's dream team of Scott Speed and Tanner Faust opting to hang out together there while they're off the track as well as on it, which is exactly what we saw in round one races. The two past champions coming in in first and second. Let's take a look back now at Memphis and their path to the podium. 2017 is underway. Brilliant start from Tanner Faust. Sebastian Eriksson in third position, tucks in behind the two Volkswagen. Beautifully executed first couple of corners there for Scott Speed and Tanner Faust. Look at the dust he's kicking up. Here is Steve Arpin incoming oh. alongside the Honda.
Honda. Steve Arpin is flying in. That's Oliver Ericsson getting ahead of Sebastian Ericsson. Mitchell de Jong in his first ever supercar race is in a podium position. Steve Arpin, who's right behind him, has yet to take the Joker lap. Quick jab at the handbrake. Yes, he is going to take it. And there is your third place. The quickest man on track that last lap was Steve Arpin. He's catching the two leaders. Lap and a half to go here for Scott Speed, and he's just keeping it so nice and collected going into the dirt section here. Faust is getting closer, closer, but is he close enough for the guy who's getting closer again? He's still Steve Arpin. It's gonna be frustrating for Tanner Faust, just looking at the rear end here of Scott Speed, wondering how can I possibly get him as we now enter the final lap of the race. If either one of these win this race, they're gonna become the winningest GRC driver in history. 11 wins for Faust, 11 wins for Speed, 1.9 seconds covering first to third. The checkered flag waves. It is Scott Speed who is relentless in Memphis. Victory for Volkswagen. So after that battle of the Beatles in that season opening round in Memphis, this is how the point standings are looking with Scott Speed in that top spot with 79 points and his teammate just behind him by five points. I'm joined in the paddock now by a commentating team of Lee Diffie and Townsend Bell. Now, guys, we just saw Memphis, one of the longest tracks we've ever seen in GRC history. Fast forward to round two here in Kentucky, and we're looking at one of the shortest tracks we've ever seen, and one of the fastest, too. 30-second laps, but it's not simple. We've got some tight turns, interesting transitions between dirt and tarmac, and we've already seen contact go down in our first round of heats. And, Will, what the drivers have seen so far, they really like. It's an exciting track. But one of the other interesting elements to GRC racing unlike other forms of racing there are no pit stops as you know all too well Townsend for tyres or for fuel but the one element of strategy that does come into play is the joker and here you could gain anywhere between say half a second to one and a half seconds but the strategical question is when do you use that joker lap yeah and the issue with the joker if you're leading the race if you get a great start and you're off to a great lead you're going to want to take that at the first period of eligibility you can't take it on the first lap but you'll probably take it on the second the lap and build the gap, keep your windshield clean. But if you're further down in the field, you really have to time it. Interestingly here, if you're too close to the car in front of you, you will actually lose a little bit of time because of the way this course sets, sets up. Let's take a little bit closer look at the track map here in Louisville. Round two, and we're in that northwestern corner of the state, and it launches very fast off the grid here through a really wicked quick kink down into turn two where there's heavy braking. Couple of downshifts. We're gonna go on board here with Steve Arpin in the JCB car. He launches with authority here. And you'll see him come right through that kink, flat out kink and heavy braking right here as you come to the right hand corner, go through a little bit of a chicane and then a long series of rights and then you hit the dirt. And this is where it gets really interesting because the dirt is very loose, but then it's asphalt to the outside. You watch Arpin rotate the car beautifully there, try to get a nice good launch. He's gonna use a little tarmac on the right side, up and over the jump, about a full second of hang time. And then a very tricky final corner back onto the tarmac, heavy braking, clipping both those apexes and back down the front straightaway past start finish. Now, the Joker lap opens up some interesting possibilities as well. Watching Arpin here working the controls first. Look at the opposite lock. Here's the Joker. You're going to swing it wide now on the dirt, carry the speed onto the tarmac, and have a nice, clean run, hopefully passing a car or two. So, Will, that's a lap around Louisville. And the guys look like they're enjoying it, as you said, Lee. We're actually going to have some more Heat 2 action coming up just there. We're going to see how those guys navigate. But stay with us. We'll be back in just a minute. The build-up at the start is so intense, but when the lights go green, you just focus. When the light goes green for me, I'm already thinking about the first corner, and I try to make my way through. Right before the lights go green, the focus becomes totally pure. Your heart rate actually drops, and then the green lights go on, and it's pure chaos. We just got done with Heat 1B and Tanner Faust got in a little bit of a muddle there. We saw some heavy contact with him, potentially some damage to the car and we are waiting to hear on a penalty and who that's going to be given to, so we're waiting on that now. I'm here in Tanner Faust Hall and out. Now Tanner, I did actually just get official word that you've been given a five second penalty. Can you talk me through what happened if you think that's fair? I had a bit of a bad start and uh, coming into one of the tightening corners I just 
um, underestimated how much uh, people would be checking up really. It's a very, very tight corner. You have to exit on the inside. I had one Honda trying to maybe come on the inside and one in front of me and I and I knew I needed to make sure I was close to that bumper but I was too close and I ended up hitting him pretty hard so that one was on me. Um, if somebody hit me that hard and pushed me off I'd hope that they got a penalty also so I'm afraid I deserve that one. And now we are looking at your team working frantically on your car. Do you know what the damage is yet and will you be able to get back out there in time for the Heat 2 races? Um, honestly what I felt on the car wasn't from the damage from any kind of a hit it wasn't too hard a hit I think it was more mud in the wheels um, they think that that may have uh, bent a drive shaft on the other side of the car and so just making sure that everything's straight before we get into the second heat thanks Tanner guys back to you well thank you and for all you young drivers out there that is the voice and the attitude of a champion taking his punishment as he should and what can't this guy do he is somewhat of a superman he's a stuntman he's a two-time red bull grc champion he's a television host this guy can do it all and he would like to become the first three-time red bull grc champion he and his andretti rallycross teammate scott speed are tied on two championships apiece as we get set for heat 2a should be a good one. Look at the lineup here. Kevin Bigham, Mitchell DeYoung, Patrick Sandell, Tanner Faust, and Austin Dine. And I love how they're starting five wide here. It really it creates a lot of drama as they come to the first corner. And those words from Tanner Faust are worth remembering as we wait for the ben start. Arvin decided to cut it. Got the I know, I know. We will watch the start at turn one with much interest. Faust pumping himself up, getting himself ready. again of the Volkswagen off the line even with the adjustment to the rules with launch control still the advantage is Volkswagen Austin Dine takes the Joker along with Mitchell DeYoung that leaves Sandell and Bingham still to take the Joker two laps to go on board with Faust let's ride along feet of jump to contend with and the Volkswagen handles it with ease. This is what Tanner Faust needs to get those seven points that you get for a heat win. And look, when you think about getting points for heats in 2017, it's a big deal because he lost points by that penalty for being a little too physical in his opening uh, heat round and that has a bigger picture consequence on the scope of the championship. For sure, it used to just be starting position as we went to the later rounds, as you say now, every heat counts, every point counts. And if I'm Tanner Faust right now, I'm thinking, how do I optimize my line and my performance? Because you know he's going to beat Scott Speed as Kevin Bingham takes a joker. Austin Dine slots in just in front of Sandell. As they come to the checker, Dine's looking to the outside, but it'll be Kevin Bingham across the line. He comes third, Dine fourth, Patrick Sandell fifth. 
and Sparathor for Sandel. I wonder what he thinks about right here being kind of roughhoused on the opening lap. He really got force wide in a very physical nature and ends up coming home fifth. But it's victory for Tanner Faust. That's the way to respond after that opening heat penalty. And take a look at turn one. The launch, Cabot Bingham on the left of screen in the Ryan Herder Ford. He got a brilliant launch, but look at Faust around the outside. A lot of tire smoke from everybody except the Volkswagen, it seemed, off the line. And here are the results. Faust, Young, Bingham, Dine, and Patrick Sandell. He did get pushed around, did Sandell, but one thing we know about him, he'll be coming back fighting for sure. Look at this. Is there nothing this Volkswagen can't do? Look at the angle. That is wild. It has been quite the start to the season for both Andretti Rallycross boys. Scott Speed, his teammate and championship leader, will be coming up shortly. going to get back to heat racing in Louisville here in just a minute but first let's talk about the most critical moment in a GRC race that is the start partly because of the shortness of this track Steve Arpin is here with us now and he's actually sitting in his cab he's going to talk us through the complex procedure that they go through before they see the green light Steve thanks so much for joining us so you're sitting in the passenger seat this looks like a very complicated rocket ship to most people talk us through the sequence that you have to go to before you get off the start line well first and foremost we're over here in a America now so this isn't the passenger seats over here so we are driving from the left side of the car but these things are so much fun to, to launch off the line zero to 60 in under two seconds but there's so much that goes into it and it all happens really fast anywhere from three to five seconds we have a whole sequence of things we got to get the car in gear make sure it's in gear it's easy to be kind of halfway and we do a lot of damage that way turn our analog system on get that boost building up and everything this here disconnects the center the center clutch so we have all-wheel drive on the launch to make sure that we get it into launch mode and then that's when all the popping and banging starts and these things get angry so i got the handbrake pulled back clutches in and i'm full throttle i'm wide open now all this has to happen throughout the red light sequence and we got anywhere from three to five seconds after those red lights go out and we go green it is like my heart's like just bouncing out of my chest and it's so just trying to anticipate when that light goes green and for our cars it's a little bit more complicated Okay, Scott Speed says a chimp can drive their cars, get them off the line, but we don't have all that, uh, we don't have all that, that computer technology in these cars, so we got to do more of the driving side of it ourselves. So it's like, it's anywhere from like a half a second to up over a second of just slipping the clutch to try and get optimum grip, but it's wide open and you're just gone, and then it's like right into race mode, turn one's coming up really quick here this weekend, so it's going to, we're starting five wide too, things are going to get hairy. A lot of skill involved, a room for error, but we know you've got it, Steve. Thanks so much for talking us through, and we're going to head straight back to the grid now for some more heat racing. Guys? Well, Lee, that smile says it all. I'd bet you a million dollars he was born with a smile on his face. Steve Arpin embraces everything that life throws at him, and just look at his history. NASCAR Xfinity Truck Series veteran. He won his first supercar win at Daytona, but I love this, the seven-time world <laughs> snowmobile champion. By 18, he takes it all with a smile. It's just a great way to go about racing. And he feels really good, too, about the team. He was able to keep a lot of the personnel after transitioning away from Chip Ganassi Racing. Now going it alone with Lowen Brow, and they've got the JCB on board as a sponsor. It's really encouraging times. He'll start second from the left alongside championship leader and reigning champ Scott Speed. Sebastian Eriksson right in the middle is Chris Atkinson. Chris Atkinson looks very calm, very collected, getting himself pumped up right there on board with Oliver Erickson. Much different looking vibe there. Steve Arpin, that smile's got to be under there. I know it looks pretty <laughs> sinister with the, with the tinted visor, but for sure he's smiling. He loves this stuff. So here we go. He always makes me think, how can such a nice guy be such a mean racer? He is fabulous once those lights go green. But look to the right when the camera cuts. Look to the left. Watch that red beetle. Here we go. Kentucky Red Bull GRC and Scott Speed blows him away off the line. Once again, the Volkswagen Beetle charges to the front, but two Hondas are side by side trying to sort themselves out. Both Ericsons door to door, nothing between them. There goes Sebastian Ericsson. Now Arpin forces his way through. Oliver Ericsson just got pushed out and left behind. Not only did Arpin go through, so too did the Subaru of Chris Atkinson. Scott Speed up and over. Arpin all kinds of crossed up in the air. Arpin's going to look for that over and under right here. 
But Sebastian Erickson keeps it really tidy and protects as they come past start finish. Now they're eligible for that Joker lap. Let's see what happens when they get to the dirt. And while this is heat racing, yes, there are points on offer, but doing what Steve Arpin did just then, you can find out what you can get away with. Looking ahead to the semifinals and finals as Atkinson takes the Joker lap. Atkinson takes the Joker. I'm surprised that Arpin didn't go for it there. start to this weekend with a first and a second for Steve Arpin but the former F1 and NASCAR driver and two-time and reigning champion in Red Bull GRC Scott Speed has done it again and to me that heat shows us now the timing of the Joker can deliver all kinds of results it's not just when you take it but how you take the jump if you don't take it as we ride on board with Steve Arpin look at Scott Speed it's not even close Good night, he's gone. You know what is impressive so far here in Kentucky? The launches by the Red Bull Hondas. Red Bull Hondas are launching well, but the absolute drive and the power of the Volkswagen just doesn't appear to have any competition right now. There's Arpin, door to door, forcing his way up the inside. He'll take third on that opening lap as they head to the jump. This is where he got a little sideways. Watch this. Whoa! <laughs> Almost jumped onto the back of Sebastian Eriksson. This is Chris Atkinson in the Subaru Rally Team machine taking the Joker and almost collected the inside of Sebastian Eriksson, then was able to just encourage him wide and I take that spot. Smart move from Eriksson to leave the gap and avoid the damage. There's Speed taking the win. Arpin Eriksson, Eriksson, and Atkinson. Down in fifth place, and Will Christian is standing by with the Subaru man. Thanks, guys. Chris, we saw you drift very wide when you came out of that joker there. We see there's obviously a lot of dirt on the track. How difficult is it to keep your line? Yeah, it's tricky. Um, we had a pretty good run early on, but I think we damaged something in the rear, and that sort of hurt us with the handling a little bit. Um, so it's frustrating. We, we could have got P3 in there, but ended up P5. So anyway, uh, we'll fight on for the next heat. Thanks so much. Guys. And that's exactly what it is. It's a fight. Look at this. We go on board with Chris Atkinson. That was that was up and up ahead getting sideways. But this man in his first full season of Red Bull GRC is determined to succeed. Third round of heats coming up here in Kentucky when we return. We welcome you back to Red Bull GRC here in Kentucky after two rounds of heats in the supercars. The points look like this. Scott Speed, two from two. Perfect score. Steve Arpin almost there as well with a win and a second. And then look at Tanner Faust, second in the championship, is struggling after that penalty for aggressive driving and contact. He's down there in fourth place, heading into this third round of heats. Things getting a little more serious here in the Bluegrass State. 
Yes, it is time for Heat 3A, and what a change from the second round of Heats to the third. Townsend, this is a whole different game. Oh, it's really changed the racing surface, especially right here as they approach the dirt. Offline to the right is the entrance to the Joker, and now that is slick and muddy, and it's a question as to whether or not it's an advantage. So, lining up for Heat 3A, Cabot Bigham, Oliver Erickson in the middle, and then Austin Dine. There is space outside there. There's meant to be two Subarus there, Will Kristen, but there's not. What's the story? Yes, Lee, that's right. That's because they're right here in the Subaru hauler. They're getting worked on both of them. Um, the Subaru team here kind of keeping their cards a little close to their chest, but I did speak to their chief mechanic, and he said it's rear suspension issues in both of the cars. I said, are these going to be ready to go back out? And he said, well, we haven't seen these issues before. Off-season testing hasn't presented any of these problems. It seems to be that it's happening on the jumps, and they were aiming simply to get one of their cars back out for semifinals. Maybe that's Patrick. That's the I was getting, but as yet, we don't actually have word on that. Interestingly, because thanks, Will, for the update, Lee, the, the uh, warm-up this yeah. morning, Sandell, it looked like, uh, had a collapse on the left rear, uh, almost like a damper failure, perhaps, or maybe the perch that holds the damper. Not really sure what the issue is, but that's surprising because the jump is not that big here. So five becomes three. And it's big of Ericsson Dine from left to right. Let's go. Oh, lights went green. And Ericsson just stayed there. And Cabot Bigham has come to a stop. I think both cars just stalled, Lee. I think Cabot Bigham and Ericsson just stalled off the line. Austin Dine with a massive advantage. Austin Dine says thank you very much. And his new Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan machine. He is leading this field. And the others, all of a sudden, right from the start, have to play catch up. Let's take a look at this start again. And it's, it looked to me like Erickson jumped on the brakes immediately, like like maybe he thought he was a full start. Let's take a look with the lights this time. No, just flat stalled it. Yeah. So Austin died. Picture perfect. The other two cars, I don't think we've ever seen that before. Can you imagine what Austin's thinking when he looks in the rear view mirror? What's, what's going on? Did I do something wrong? No. I would, I'll tell you what, I, I would have been thinking, boy, I must be guilty. There's no <laughs> way that I got such a great start. But now Austin Dine with a commanding 3.2 second lead over Bigham. And he gets to try out this wet surface now as he approaches the jump. Smooth sailing. Enjoying the ride on board. And look, this is racing, right? It swings in roundabouts, the ebb and flow of fortune. It didn't go Dine's way in the season opener in Memphis. Now a little bit of luck comes back his way. I can only guess that in programming kind of the launch control strategy and predicting the revs for the start, that the surface just had way more grip than what Bigham and Erickson expected. Anything to do with the change in technical regulations about the reduction in launch control? I don't think so because it was instantaneous the stall happened so remember they would have had a chance to just do a scouting lap earlier to try the wet surface but I think things are drying so much quicker than they anticipated. Next time we see these guys on track it'll be semi-finals time here in Red Bull GRC Kentucky. First time the series, this is the seventh year of the series in competition, has ever raced here in Lulu, Kentucky. You're looking at Austin Dine from Ray Hall, Lenneman, Lanigan Racing, leading the way. And those seven points will really come in handy as Erickson takes the Joker lap. Erickson takes the Joker, Austin Dine and Kevin Bingham still have the Joker available. And I think Austin will be able to hold on, but right now, Kevin Bingham only a second and a half back still has the chance to joker so will that be enough i doubt it but we're about to find out final lap 25 year old behind the wheel of this car leading the way never missed a main a supercar main event last year that was good consistency from austin dive now he takes the joker lap as he has to and so too cabot bigger this is going to be close for second or will it be all Bigham needs to do is keep it tidy right there. Big understeer, great drive from Erickson. He has a chance, but no, Kevin Bigham will hold on. I think just a chance. Just. It's a line. Well done, that man there, Austin Dine. Perfect start, and that's what clinched it for him. The others suffered on the line, and that's okay, victory. Good job, Austin. They want you at the uh, spin zone. It's where they're going to interview. Good work. And here is that crazy start one more time. No issues for Austin Dime. 
And that's what you want to see in GRC. Clear in front and nobody flanking either side. <laughs> Clear was the, the, uh, the key word there as Austin just blew them away. You saw the Honda of Ericsson launch and then just stop. He ended up coming home third behind Cabot Bingham. So precious points there for last year's lights champion Cabot Bingham as well. Celebration though for Austin Dine. A much needed third round heat victory. Good work. And here is our race victor. That's a morale boost like you can't believe. He needed that one. Especially for the team. Ray Hall Letterman, new to GRC, their first heat win. And after a very difficult Memphis, this is a nice way to bounce back. All right, there's Will in the background. Will, take it away. Thank you, Lee. Austin, congratulations on that heat win there. A little bit of a gift for you. At what point did you realize that Oliver Erickson there was having an issue? I had no idea what's happening behind. I just know that we just killed them on the start and had a really good launch. And uh, just stoked to racing. This uh, Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan racing team has worked crazy hours just to get us here. And uh, this is like our first test session. We've had zero tests or anything, and we're already competitive. So it's, it's we got some good guys, and I'm pretty confident going into the races today. Thanks, Austin. You bagged some points, guys. Yeah, valuable points. He matches as many points as he got in the opening two rounds of heats. Austin Dine, victorious in Heat 3A. Heat 3B coming up, and you'll see the Andretti Rallycross VWs of Speed and Faust up next. Well, here at Red Bull GRC, there's important relationships that go on in the team. One of the most important one is between driver and spotter. And I'm here now with Mitchell DeYoung, spotter Tanner Witten. Now, Tanner, a lot of the people watching Red Bull GRC will recognize not only your name, but your face from driving in lights. You've got a lot of experience yourself and Mitchell. I've had a good relationship with spotter and driver. Tell us a little bit about what you talk about and the important points that you cover. I mean, on a short track like this, there's a lot of, a lot of really important points. Really, the strat joker strategy is really, really important getting the car off the line trying to get some clean air is super super important so there's a lot of little things that go into into spotting on such a short track like we have here in louisville and with all the experience at red bull grc you're obviously able to pass that on to mitchell but where else do you gather those skills from and use them as a spotter here i mean i learned a lot about spotting from my spotter jason canals who uh, who spotted for me ever since my my first race in grc um Ch uh, jason is uh, chad canals younger brother who is of course is jimmy johnson's uh, crew chief in nascar so he has a, a lot of spotting experience here and in uh, short track racing uh, over in the midwest so uh, definitely learned a lot from him Mitchell is on the grid, so I'm going to let you get to your job, and it's over to racing. Guys, back to you. So important, the job of the sponsor, Lee. As a spotter and a sponsor, and a sponsor. is also <laughs> so important. As we get set for Supercar Heat 3B, Scott Speed going for the full sweep. Three wins in a row, can he do it? Tanner Faust, Steve Arpin right in the middle, and then Mitchell De Jong, who we were just talking about, and Sebastian Eriksson on the far outside. Got to say, I love this five wide. It's terrific. I was speaking with Mitchell De Jong earlier about what it's like to be sort of the, the young guy on that three-car Honda Red Bull team, and, and it seems like he's always racing his teammates, as is Tanner Faust and his teammate, Scott Speed. And Mitchell told me, you know, it's really tough because you have to be so polite and careful. You don't want to be slamming your teammates around, but every one of these guys wants to win. This guy, no teammate. One car team with Lowenbro and Steve Arpin in the JCB car, so he could care less about the other four guys on the line. I'm keen to see how everyone launches here, given what happened in heat 3A. Look at how dry it is. Do they get it right? We're about to find out. Speed on the inside, Faust in the black and yellow field. He gets tagged by Arpin and gets tagged again, and Ericsson comes around the outside. He gets hit by Faust going into turn one. Speed on the inside on two wheels. Whoa! Oh, yes. There goes Arpin. Arpin has lost it. Arpin absolutely backwards going into the right-hander. Scott Speed now has all kinds of pressure from the Hondas, and he gives a big hit to Sebastian Ericsson. And here comes Mitchell De Young. All of a sudden, the championship leader goes from first to fourth. The entire field here realizing we need to put the heat and the pressure and the contact on Scott Speed. If we're going to beat him, we're going to have to push him around. And they certainly did that on the first lap. Now, this 
forces to the advantage of Tanner Faust. Tanner needed to get some more points and a victory to give himself that prioritized starting spot for the semi-final. Is it going to work out the way that it hoped? Look at this wild start. It looks like Arpin's getting squeezed. He pushes Tanner. Tanner gets out of shape. Scott Speed has the advantage, except Erickson around the outside puts the squeeze on Speed. And then I think further back, Mitchell Young gets into the back of Arpin, maybe. Or was that some defensive driving from Arpin not to collide further with the beetle of Tanner Faust? Tough to say, but I love this. Now you've got the fastest guy in GRC, Scott Speed, sitting back in fourth position. He still has a joker to take up front. Faust and Sebastian Erickson already did their joker lap. Let's see what Scott Speed opts to do here. He hangs back. He's looking for a clean launch over the jump as he lets Young take the joker. And Townsend, while we see the OMSE Hondas there, the Red Bull Hondas uh, in this race and racing together, I want to give a shout out and say on behalf of everybody here in Kentucky, we are thinking of the Kentucky kid, Nicky Hayden, MotoGP world champion, races in world superbikes now for the Red Bull Honda team. He had a bicycle accident earlier this week in Italy and is in a critical condition in an Italian hospital. Nicky, we are all thinking of you and sending positive vibes your way here from your home state of Kentucky. Absolutely uh, devastating news for Kate. One of the highlights of my career was Everybody having to join us as a guest at the Indy 500. He's not a nicer racer on the planet, so we're all thinking about the entire Hayden family right now. Very best of us. One lap to go for Tanner Faust, the rock star beetle. Boy, oh boy, he had to drive like a rock star too at the start. He was getting ping pong everywhere. Well, I don't think Scott Speed can take on Faust, but I believe he has a chance. Look at that Honda hold up Scott Speed. I think that might be intentional, trying to give his teammate the advantage, perhaps. Let's see what happens as Scott Speed comes to the final corner. We spoke about Joker lap strategy and how it works out. There is Scott Speed popping into third place on this final lap. He's had two wins. I'll tell you what, he won't mind seeing his Andretti Rallycross teammate Tanner Faust take that third heat victory. That's going to help Tanner as far as the starting position for the upcoming semi-final. First victory here in Kentucky for Faust. And I'll tell you, Tanner was lucky to survive those first three corners. He was right in the middle of the jam. Let's take another look at this. Watch the yellow car in the middle, the JCB Ford Fiesta. He tags the back of Faust. Faust ping pongs from his teammate to Ericsson. He is the man in the middle, literally. And there goes up and through on the inside. Got plenty on that curve. On board here, I think with Mitchell DeYoung. Yes, so let's watch. Here's the contact, ping pong and around. Tanner Faust goes through a 100 mile an hour plus sweeper with a tank slapper on the way in. There goes Arpin as Faust recovers and takes the win. You want to talk about why GRC is one of the most exciting forms of motor racing on the planet? You just saw it. That's the reason why. Tanner Faust with the win, Mitchell DeYoung in for second, and Scott Speed picks up third spot. Will, what did you think of that one? That was exciting. <laughs> yes, it was. I was up here in the spotter style, which is obviously the best view. It was super exciting. Now, Tanner, you told us at the beginning there this was mostly about strategy, but we saw your driver there get in the mix. He came out second. How did you help him in that situation, Co? It's all about just trying to figure out the timing between the regular line and the joker line, trying to figure out where they're going to slot in based on the cars around you. And with how, how tight the entry to the joker is here with the regular line, it's, it's almost hard to tell who's going to joker and who's not going to joker. So it's kind of a crapshoot on, on how you're going to end up at the very end. So just trying to do our best. It kind of got in the way of our teammate there, which it was a lot of my fault. So just um, just trying to, trying to figure out ways to make strategy play out here. Thanks so much, Tanner. Guys, there you go. Mitchell DeYoung came in 15 points into this third round of heats. That's going to help him a little bit better as well, heading to the semi-finals. Wild stuff here in Kentucky. Also looking forward to the supercar semi-finals, given what just went down in heat 3B. Look at Scott Speed on the inside. He's getting hit by his teammate. He's getting hit by everybody. It was a wild ride, highlighting the intensity of Red Bull GRC racing. And let's hear from the man who leads this championship. Scott Speed is standing by with Will. Thanks, Lee. Scott, you really didn't come off too well in that you were on the inside. You got squeezed. We saw you do that earlier in earlier heats there. How did you manage to get that back out of there and come out with a third? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. It was definitely a wild start. But uh, as it turns out, we were able to collect enough points so we can start the semifinal on pole, which is super important. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it was a, it didn't turn out well, but it was definitely fun. I mean, it was a wild start and the conditions out there are really fun for us. 
uh, a lot of moving around trying to find grip out there in the wet so uh, yeah so far so good we got a good starting position for the semi and we just keep the train rolling and with these wet conditions now moving forward what's your strategy for making sure you can stay out in front uh, well, hopefully just doing a little bit better than we just did. Uh, try to get the first corner, get off the line a little bit better, make sure you're really asserting yourself in, in the inside on the, on the first corner. And and then, uh, yeah, hope for the best. And there's five other guys out there that are trying to do the same thing, so you can't plan too much. Thanks, Scott. We'll see you out there for semifinals. Guys. And even though it is intense, that smile is sincere. Scott Speed is thoroughly enjoying his time in Red Bull GRC. Semifinals are coming up and you'll see speed on track next. It was a little wet this year in the Derby. Always dreaming coming out on top though. However, his triple crown chances were dashed yesterday in the Preakness as we show you the lineups for the two semi-finals. Championship leader Scott Speed and his Andretti Rallycross teammate Tanner Faust head the lineups in both semi-finals. However, you see in semi-final A, Subaru's Chris Atkinson will not race. Let's head to the Subaru camp now to find out more with Will Christian. Thank you, Lee. Patrick, we see that your teammate Chris Atkinson is not going to be running in the semis right now. They're planning on getting you out, but your team is still working on the car. Can you tell me a bit more about the issues that both the Subarus have had here today? So we've been testing a lot with this car throughout the whole winter. We've been flying these cars hundreds of times. But for some reason now, uh, we have an, a suspension issue in the rear. So in the landing, uh, we bend the suspension and we tried to figure out why. Uh, during testing, when we were testing, it, it went fine. And, and, but now for some reason, there's something special to this landing. So we tried to figure it out. Thank you so much, Patrick. Strange situation, Lee, as Sandell said, they've tested so much, they've jumped the car hundreds of times. And this jump in particular, as I said earlier, not that different. It's a right. normal looking jump. The landing is on an angle that looks very consistent with what we've seen in the past, but obviously huge frustration for Subaru. So there's the lineup across that front row. Speed and then the 19 year old Mitchell de Young. What can he come up with in the Honda Civic and Steve Arpin in the JCB machine on the outside? Oliver Erickson with the omission of Chris Atkinson will start all alone on that second row. Here is Arpin, came up with a podium at the season opener in Memphis. He's won here already this weekend here in Kentucky. How about this man, Scott Speed? He kind of had a rough third heat. How's this first semi-final going to shake out as we go inside the Honda of Oliver Erickson? You know, for all of these drivers, the settings that you choose look at the very moisture and dryness here on the grid. So it should be really interesting on the line. Ready to go, semi-final number one. From the VW, or is it better from Mitchell the Young in the Honda in the middle? How about Steve Arpin working the outside? He is not giving up. Look at this, and Arpin, oh, and Young is off into the wall. Ooh, into the concrete barrier. That left rear looks to be broken on Young up front. It's Arpin, Scott Speed, and Erickson. Or Young, excuse me. Oh, there was no stopping Steve That's Arpin. Erickson. There was no stopping Steve Arpin, and Scott Speed is getting beaten up by the Honda of Oliver Erickson. The championship leader all of a sudden finds himself in third place. I can only wonder if the Volkswagen team hasn't caught up with the rate at which this track is dry, because right now Arpin looks like a rocket ship up front. Let's go back and take a look at the contact earlier with DeYoung. Here you see speed on the inside, DeYoung's in the middle, and Arpin is just going to go rodeo style high around the outside. And it looks like, I don't know if DeYoung jumped on the brakes or something broke, but he went darting off to the left without contact from behind. Wow, wow. we have just heard that Steve Arpin will get a stop and hold penalty for that contact. I'm not sure I saw contact there, Lee. It was not obvious to me that Steve Arpin would be responsible. He's going to be furious here. Here's the stop and go in the penalty box. Wow now joins behind the guy that he had the skirmish with, Mitchell DeYoung, and it clears him, no problem there. You can see the left rear toe is completely out of whack on Mitchell DeYoung, so this will be a handful as we ride on board with DeYoung side by side with Arpin. And how about that? Up front, Oliver Erickson and Scott Speed come together, and Scott Speed is not happy. Look, he's coming back with authority. Oh, this is the 2015 GRC Lights champion, mixing it up with the two-time and reigning supercar champion. 
So everybody was of the opinion after Memphis that it was kind of the race for third, that the Volkswagens would have this all sewn up. Oliver Erickson is proving differently. Erickson was taking the choker. Scott Speed out front, and look at Erickson. Whammo! Oh, goodness. I'm not sure how race control is going to see that. Is Scott Speed supposed to leave room because the priority is on the Joker, or is the Joker driver supposed to back out? Either way, massive contact, and Scott Speed is right on the bumper and ready to give it back. Well, listen, if Arpin got a stop and hold for that, for that rush, I would say, not that hit on the opening lap, surely Ericsson's got to get something for that, well, I imagine. Or do you put it on Scott Speed where you have to leave the door open for a driver that's rejoining? We've seen a little bit of both in the past, and I'm sure race control's having a look, but now they are legitimately side by side on the same course. Let's see if Speed goes for the over-under. There he goes. The Volkswagen probably has a little power advantage on the Honda right now. There you see Speed rocketing up the outside. Honda up against Volkswagen. Oh! The Volkswagen goes right around the outside. What a move, Scott Speed. That could be the, the best technical pass I've ever seen in GRC with a huge amount of bravery up against the concrete barriers. That was awesome. That's why he is a two-time Red Bull GRC Supercar champion. Scott Speed didn't get nasty, didn't get dirty, just did a clean pass right around the outside. That was a pass that I'm sure Oliver Erickson did not see coming. He was trying to keep it up the inside speed with the win. Arp in third. Mitchell DeYoung hangs on with a bit, about 15 degrees of left rear toe out for fourth position. Wow. Didn't that semifinal have a little bit of everything? A wild start, plenty of contact, and some terrific passing. None better than the one. Scott Speed on Oliver Erickson. Let's go back to the beginning, though. Watch the yellow and blue car right at the front. I don't see the penalty on Arpin there at all. He was just coming across the nose. But then this contact, Woo. both guys going for one piece of real estate. And then check this out. This is the pass for the lead and ultimately the win. This was incredible. Massive entry speed from Scott Speed and such an uncanny ability to navigate so precisely down to the apex and make the pass stick. That front left tire was smoking. That was under some serious load. Speed, Ericsson, Arpen, and DeYoung. The first semi-order, and that was spectacular. Boy, did Scott Speed have to work hard for that one. And now look, this just happened. Oh. So I'm, I'm of the opinion, is that sarcasm or is that uh, or is he saying good hard racing uh, I don't I, think he was too keen on no, that maneuver I don't think he was either. yeah massive impact to the right door for Scott Speed but he hangs on that just happened a few moments ago let's join Will what you got hi guys well I'm here now with Oliver Erickson he's just gonna hopefully take his helmet off so we can have a chat Oliver can you just remove your helmet for a second we were going to get Scott Speedley but he rolled past us not looking happy at all Oliver, Scott just came up to you there, he got straight out of his car, he's clearly not happy with the contact there. What is it from your viewpoint? I don't know, I came from the Joker and I had the inside line. It was hard to see where he was coming. And yeah, we, we had contact, but I got off the better one and I had the inside, so... It was a bit of contact, so I understand if he's a bit angry, but... Uh, I don't see, I don't get any penalties or anything for it, so I can't be anything wrong with it. Thank you, Oliver. We'll let you weigh in. Uh, Scott Speed, like I said, Lee has already disappeared. He was not ready to talk to us. Yeah, understandably, yep. He was probably thinking unnecessary, uh, perhaps damage or contact. Nonetheless, it was spectacular to watch, wasn't it? Semi-final number one, and if you like what you see, there is more to come. Semi-final B is up next after the break. Ooh, and temperatures and tempers are rising, heading to the final. Back here in Louisville, Let's track the path to the semi-finals for two-time series champion Tanner Faust. And it hasn't been all that straightforward. No, penalty here for Faust for contact in one of the earlier heats. But he came roaring back in the heat 2A to take the win. And you know what? I like the way that he commented after that penalty. He said, you know what? If somebody hit me, I would hope they got penalized as well. I take that on the chin. That's part of racing. Anyway, those two wins have helped Tanner Faust start in the best possible position for semi-final B. There he is right there on the inside line, which could be deemed as pole position. 
He has the advantage there. Cabot Bigham starts next to Tanner Faust. Sebastian Erickson on the outside of row one. And as we go back to row two, only one car there. Austin Dine, Patrick Sandell will not be able to make the semi based on the suspension issues we talked about earlier with the Subaru team. So on board now with Austin Dine, Tanner Faust getting ready. Check the focus, ready for the launch. Lights go green. This is semi-final number two. Let's go. Ooh, Kevin Bigham with a stall there. Austin Dine gets a nice run up the inside, but it is Erickson on the outside. Groove takes the point. Sebastian Erickson leads the way. And for the second semi in a row, we now see the Beatles having to really work hard as Tanafaus gets into Erickson. Very similar to some of the contact earlier, not as hard as the contact that gave Faust the penalty. Now Austin Dine wants a piece of Tanner Faust off the jump. There's a Honda, a Volkswagen, and we ride on board a Ford Fiesta. And after that heat victory, Austin Dine is very, very high in confidence. Oh, there is bumping to the fenders and grinding to the gears here on these opening laps. Everybody wants the key, the key starting position for the final. Joker this lap, Joker, Joker. Austin Dine Radio instructing from the spotter. Take the Joker this lap. Clear your head. He'll go right. Take the Joker right here. So too does race leader Sebastian Erickson. So Austin Dine will get the position. Tanner Faust makes more contact to the rear bumper of Austin Dine. Hard at work inside the cockpit of that. Rockstar Volkswagen Beetle and again tags Dine on the inside oh. and tags him. Says I'm coming through. And Austin Dine doesn't like that. Tags Tanner Faust back. Now keep in mind that Faust still has the Joker lap to come. And he reserves that Joker lap for a later lap. Austin Dine still working the back of Faust. Now Faust pulls out a little bit of a gap. I love this track here in Louisville. The racing is fantastic. Kevin Bigham has played catch up very effectively at the back. He is the 2016 GRC Lights champion, and he's going to be his work cut out, I think, to get by there to get Austin Dine, but he's got to move considerably closer. And if that logo on the dashboard of Austin Dine's Ford Fiesta look familiar, yes, it is exactly the same team as the IndyCar operation and sports car operation. Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanning, and Racing. Of course, the IndyCar side of the operation extremely busy this month. It's the month of May, it's the month of the Indianapolis 500. And we're only about an hour's drive away from the greatest spectacle of racing is Kevin Bigham now working the back of Austin Dine. Bigham still has the Joker available. And I would think he'd take it right now for sure. He wants a chance to come back on Tanner Faust. There goes Kevin Bigham. Let's see if he goes wide here on the Joker. There he goes, driver's right. Austin Dine slides a little bit wide. Should be pretty easy for Bigham to get by here. Let's see if Austin Dine tries to give him a rub. There it is, Austin Dine to the inside. That is a textbook bump and run. Look at this, door to door, wheel to wheel, one lap to go. Seven tenths of a mile. This is a tremendous scrap. That, that win did wonders for Austin Dine. Terrific piece of car control from Austin Dine. He gets into the tires a little bit. Can he cross over here on Cabot? Think of his Tanner Faust takes the Joker. Final lap, Tanner Faust to the front. Little bump from Erickson, it won't be enough. Tanner Faust is gonna win this thing. We talked about strategy and when do you use that Joker lap. If you're Tanner Faust, you use it at the right time. He wins semi-final B. Sebastian Erickson in for second and Cabot Bingham really drove well considering he blew the start, played catch up and it was an excellent display. A lot of work required on all four of these cars before we get to the final. That was some aggression. Everybody wanted to finish up front. There wasn't one driver who didn't have to work hard in that race and this is the key moment here. The Joker lap from Volkswagen and Dreddy Rally Sport driver Tanner Faust makes the move on Ericsson. Just a little tap there. No major drama. And that was able to convert 
Tanner Faust to the victor. Erickson second, Cabot Bingham, that was a hard fight. Austin Dine really enjoyed that one. He'll be a bit frustrated not to come away with a better spot than that, but he was in the mix. Boy, oh boy, I can't wait to see the final, given the nature of the two semis, where they are not afraid to do some pushing and shoving here in Louisville. Churchill Downs there, just a mile from where we are here at the Kentucky Expo Center, where round two a Red Bull Global Rallycross is going down, our supercar final coming up in just a minute. Now, in the paddock here for the 2017 season, we do have some new faces for supercar, but they are familiar faces when it comes to the Red Bull Global Rallycross series. Three of those new additions, all past GRC Lights champions who've made the transition into supercar look, well, easier than it should be. In supercar, the cars are a lot faster and the competition's a lot greater. So you have to learn to manage not only more horsepower and more ability to spin the wheels, but also to battle and keep your car safe throughout the entire race. The change from lights to supercar has been uh, it's quite a big step for us. Uh, we've got twice the horsepower and a different animal to tame. Uh, it's a lot of similarities to it. We have four-wheel drive in both cars, but the power is and how you use it is way different. The lights on the supercars are very different. The supercars are much louder, more power, and all around crazier. The competition is insane. Um, a lot more contact, uh, a lot more craziness, and a lot more competitive. Um, so all around, it's just a big jump up from the lights. Very talented drivers there and the lights field is stacked with even more talent this year. We've had some lights action go down, so we're going to check that out now. And it has been fascinating today, Townsend, not only for the pure raw racing, but how about the opportunistic moves? Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I'll tell you, these lights races are oftentimes the best of the weekend. So many of these young guns wanting to charge to the front. There's Travis McCoy getting the side of Jonathan Bennett, Pacoy comes out the worst for it. And this was Christian Brooks coming to the line, a semifinal winner. Connor Martell also showing well, three wide at times over the jump, but a ton of contact and a lot of crash damage in these preliminary races leading up to the final. One thing's for sure, they all want an opportunity at the next level. And for Connor Martell, the championship leader, it's going very well. You can see the lights Louisville show. Wednesday, May 24 at 5 p.m. Eastern. And of course, those lights drivers want to be like this guy. They want to be like Scott Speed, a two-time supercar champion in Red Bull GRC, as Scott just methodically prepares for the upcoming final. First time that Red Bull GRC has raced in Louisville, Kentucky, and Speed will be on the best starting spot alongside his Andretti Rally Sport uh, teammate Tanner Faust and Oliver Erickson has shown he's not going to get pushed around might be his first season in the supercars but he is ready to race I tell you what they're ganging up on the VW drivers they certainly are a lot of pushing and shoving that Scott Speed has had to survive so far and we'll see what happens in the final go 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 try to get that ball flagged Hold your line, hold your line, five wide, five wide, get tucked in there, get tucked in there. Spray, 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 close that gap, close that gap, spray. Will it be this way in the 10-lap main event? 50 points up for grabs. Will Scott Speed still lead here with treatment like that as the points leader? It's all to play for in Louisville. But they're going to slug it out over the final. Will it be another Volkswagen victory? Could we see the Red Bull Hondas up there? What about Austin Dine? There is so much to play for here in the Bluegrass State. And this is just a sampling of what has gone down today in mixed weather conditions, dry and wet and 
money. It doesn't matter what it's been. Very it has been phenomenal racing so far. And all that means nothing. It all comes down to 10 lap shootout around this seven tenths of a mile track in Kentucky. Can one of the young stars do it? Or will it be another show by the veterans? Find out when we come back. Just before the race, I always put my left glove on before the right one, and I always pick myself on the arms to pump myself up. I don't really have to get myself too psyched up before I get in the car, because right before I strap in, I'm, uh, I'm all amped up, so it's just about staying calm uh, before races. I'm a pretty lucky guy to do what I do, so before every race, I say a little prayer thanking him for the opportunity I got. <laughs> I ask him to get me mad so we can go out there and be as aggressive as we need to be. Here in Louisville, Kentucky, for round two of Red Bull Global Rally Cross. Our finalists are getting gridded here and it is getting wet. I'm getting wet, but so is the track. So it's going to make for a very interesting final. But that's not the only reason why. Let's take a look at our front row here. We see Scott Speed, our 2016 champion and winner in Memphis, in the spot he wants to be in to strike again. He's sitting in pole position. Next to him, his teammate Tanner Faust, who's also got that speed off the line to challenge Scott Speed. But take a look at this. Oliver Erickson sits third on this front line. If you were with us earlier when we were watching semi-final one, you would have seen an altercation between him and Scott Speed. Scott was not happy after some heavy contact, so it'll be interesting to see how these guys handle the line in this final. Guys, you nice and dry up there in the booth. We are, Will, thank you, but very excited, just like you are, to see this supercar final. Scott Speed, remember in Memphis just a couple of weeks ago, he set a new Red Bull GRC record with his 12th main event victory. He starts alongside his Andretti teammate Tanner Faust and Oliver Erickson, the teenager, doing a really nice job. Watch that yellow JCB Ford Fiesta of Steve Arpin starting in the middle of the second row. He has been dynamic today. And don't rule out Sebastian Erickson and the other Red Bull Honda. And this young driver, Cabot Bigham, and then from the back row, you're going to see a lot of aggression, I think, out of Austin Dine and Mitchell DeYoung. They know that the first corner is a big opportunity to make up ground. The question, Lee, is what does this new moisture wide, mean now? It. Remember, they've gone right into this it. race probably thinking it's going to be dry. Now the surface is going to be very slick. And across a three-round heat format, followed by the semifinals, the weather has been different almost every time out. And where it's tricky is right here on the launch. They have dry settings, I believe. It's slick. In Louisville, it's time to bring the action. Scott Speed with a brilliant launch from the inside. That red VW. Tanner Faust goes door to door with his teammate, though. Desperate to get a main event win, and here come the Hondas. Wow, look at Tanner Faust hanging to the outside. They're side by side. Now he's going to try to tuck in. No, he stays door to door with Scott Speed. Wet, greasy, slippery, and we've lost a couple wide. Here comes the first Honda. Oh! Faust on the inside of Scott Speed. Does that force him to take the joke like you can't on the opening lap? So he tucks back in and has lost four positions. Scott Speed back in fifth. Tanner Faust is now trying to push up the inside. How does he see? Look at that. He goes inside Erickson. Faust takes the lead but runs wide. Now Erickson has another run. Sebastian Erickson it is. Now the two Erickson's in this race, no relation whatsoever. Faust around. Challenge from behind. Big sideways there. Look at this. The top two take the joker lap. The signboard's flying. There's cars going everywhere. Kevin Bingham is off at the back. And new leader is Steve Arpin. Steve Arpin keeps it clean. Now has the lead. Here comes Scott Speed. He knows I need to go right now if I'm going to make up this gap and have any chance at a win. The biggest question in Red Bull GRC in 2017 is can the Volkswagens from Andretti be beaten? Well, you're seeing them run third. Get them both. 
stop and does get on the inside and gets the drive. Whoa! Tanner Faust, the Driftmaster, slots it right in between the two. And here goes Scott Speed in the background, the championship leader. Takes the jump collapse. Is that putting in front? Is it enough? Oh, tucks back in behind up and ahead of Erickson. How did Scott Speed make up all that ground in one lap? He is now a contender for the win. How close do you like it? Here in Louisville, this is a slugfest. Unbelievable GRC main event. I can't believe how close they've been racing without heavy contact. The way Scott Speed slotted inside. Now Tanner Faust is all over speed again. More contact coming here. A little bit more respectful that time, though. He didn't want to take his teammate out. Arpen and Erickson side by side over the 70 foot jump. This is some of the best GRC racing I've ever seen. This Louisville track is unbelievable. Erickson does the crossover, goes to the front. And the rain came at the right time. And look, these Hondas have been launching. The Oldsburgs, MSE, Red Bull, Civics have been launching off the line, but forget the launch, they're just racing well. And it looks to me like maybe the rain has held up a little bit. Now the track will dry a bit on the groove. Advantage Volkswagen, if that happens, on board with Arpa now. Look at the windscreen is cracked. JCB4 tries to jump on the inside and then Scott Speed running third. Only four laps remain for Scott Speed to try to pull something off there. Steve Arpin still working it, trying to stay tidy and get back to Erickson. And Erickson was just so aggressive, working his way through the traffic. They clipped the tires there out of the way. Scott Speed, what will he do as they come to the jump? Sebastian Erickson was runner up in the Supercar Championship back in 2015. The 24 year old Swede gets sideways. By the Canadian and Scott Speed, the former F1 and NASCAR driver. Look at our been reigning champion. It's not over for Speed and it's not over for Arpin either. Arpin pushing Ericsson as hard as he can, allows Scott Speed to close on Arpin. Now Scott Speed looks to the outside. I think he's going to try to cross it up here. Let's see if he goes over under. No, he stays outside, squares up the exit to the dirt. Now Tanner Faust is caught back up to his teammate. The graphic on the left shows you that these top three, top four, in fact, almost all of the cars have used the jump and lap. There you go, and they're remaining others. Off Colin Dine and Oliver Erickson. Look at these two. There's. That's Erickson of another kind. Oliver Erickson and Austin Dine coming to the final corner. So your top four is separated by only a second. Two laps to go. This seven tenths of a mile track has really turned on something special. First time for GRC racing in Kentucky, and it has been memorable. Here comes Faust now, tries to do the over and under and just clipped the back of Scott Speed. The Beatle teammates pushing each other as hard as I've ever seen them push each other. Now we're back on board with Tanner Faust. Look at the mud and the residual moisture and dirt on the windscreen. Very tough to see. One lap to go. Scott Speed has to do something now. Sebastian Erickson is the race leader. Steve Arpin has been the chaser. He's been hunted and he's been doing some hunting. I think now he's more in defensive mode of Scott Speed. Ooh, Erickson got wide there. Arpin might have a chance to close in the last corner. Is there one last nudge? Is there one last hit? Arpin tries to move Erickson and he does. This is going to be a drag race to the line. Second. What an amazing final. That is the best How GRC racing. How do I get racing. beat up like that and get passed? And Arpin is not happy. Let's see what he does here. Gives right. him a thumbs up for good race. And good I think Arpin's just so frustrated because he made Let's the move. Let's get the Dakota out in the front. Get the Dakota in the podium. He's asking to have the owners of the Lone Bro team come to the podium to be with him. It's it's a great group of people. They're all about people. They tried to keep the entire group together when they transitioned from Ganassi to be an independent team. What a run, though, by the 24-year-old Swedish driver, Sebastian Eriksson. He and Arpen and Speed and Tanner Faust. Boy, oh boy, they were just going blow for blow, lap for lap. And this was it to the line. Arpin did everything right, just got out dragged by the Honda to the line, so close. Here it is from the finish cam.
That has to be one of the closest finishes, if not the closest, in GRC history. And that is fitting that that is the first victory for Oldsburg since they've switched to Honda in the Honda Civic to have it. That, and look how happy, look how happy they are. That is huge. And look at the sunshine out there. You called it. That last little bit of moisture absolutely changed the game for the Volkswagen guys and gave a great opportunity for the Honda team to put their handling to good work. This is a championship winning team. And so winning is nothing new to the Oldsburg's crew, but for their first win in a Honda and to do it like that, Sebastian Eriksson hung tough among the big boys. That was magic. Reliving what was a colossal supercar Scott main event in wet weather. weather. The shower oh, came oh, just oh, at the oh, right oh, time oh, to oh, really oh, spice oh, things oh, up, and oh, that's an understatement. Oh, it was an unbelievable final lead, side by side, virtually the whole way. A ton of contact as you see Tanner Faust force his way past Sebastian Eriksson to the front, but then Eriksson came back along with Steve Arpin, who led for a while. And there was so much close action just like this, and the contact was there, but it wasn't super heavy. Everybody survived to the end. Very respectful on racing. If you want to know how epic this final was, less than one second separated the top four. Seven hundredths of a second separated the top two. And Sebastian Eriksson gave Oldberg's MSE their first victory with Honda. And look at Scott Speed as well. He was delighted for the youngster as we check the results. Eriksson with the win. That's his second career victory. Arpin and Speed on the podium with Tanner Faust coming home in fourth ahead of Mitchell de Young. What a final that was. Let's head to Will Christian. Wow, that was superb. Thanks, Lee. That was amazing. One of the most exciting finals I think we've seen in GRC history. Sebastian, congratulations. This is your second GRC career win, but you have just brought home the first GRC win for Honda. How are you feeling as a team? Try and put that into words for me. Hi, it's just amazing. I mean, the team has worked so hard for the past one and a half year, and to finally be able to win our first race, that's just amazing. I need to, to thank the whole crew from Honda Red Bull, Omasi, and all the guys that worked so hard to make this possible. I'm, I'm so happy for all of you. And talking of working hard, that was not an easy race to win. You had to work very hard. We saw a lot of people take the, the lead there. And then it came down to that, what can only be described as a drag race at the end. Did you know how close Steve was? Because for what we can see, we're looking at seven hundredths of a second. Yeah, I saw him come. I got a small hit from him in the last corner. I kind of expected I would get that. So I was on the outside and I just pulled all the power I had to, to try to beat him for a finish line. But I, it looked like from my car that I was ahead. So I felt quite safe when I crossed the finish line. And for the team now, where do you go? You get together, have a little collaboration. What's the strategy for moving forward here? Yeah, for sure, we, we just need to celebrate this today. Um, we can't stop working here. We, we still have a lot of work to do to, to keep this, to get this form and pace, but we, we will do our best to, to win more races this year. Thanks so much, Sebastian. Go and have fun with your team, guys. And will three different nationalities, three different cars, three different teams in the top three as we take a look at the championship points, Townsend. And Scott Speed may have only finished third in that main event, but he's doubled his advantage almost over Tanner Faust. So he's increased his lead. Steve Arpin still hanging there in third place, but then the three Hondas, Ericsson, De Jong and Ericsson, run four, five and six in points. Mate, you've been around the sport, you've been around GRC for a long time. Where do you rate that one? That was the best GRC final I've ever seen. I only wish I was out there. It looked like too much fun <laughs> these guys were having. It was tight, it was hard racing, but it was respectful. And when you see a two-time champion like Scott Speed and Steve Arpin, who's a stalwart of the sport, genuinely pleased for Sebastian Eriksson. So there you have it. Up next, it's Game 5 of the Stanley Cup Eastern Conference Final. The Senators and the Penguins are tied at two apiece. These 600 horsepower supercars are back on track June 3rd from Thompson Speedway for the first double header of the season. As usual, for more information, visit NBCSports.com. The winner of Round 2 of Red Bull GRC from Louisville, Sebastian Erickson. Fantastic. We'll see you in Connecticut.